I said to him, Did I bring here yesterday? And I'm a little nervous because uh, Naresh fix started the um, fix started the uh, day with saying that no con co no co collaboration, and I'm here to talk about the power of collaboration. So, but I have to repeat what uh, Naresh said because yeah, so that's what I'm 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 talking about. But that's the easy bit that you get out because what gets stuck that gets stuck in your brain. So uh, take it with pinch of salt. Uh, Take it with the context. Uh, this is what worked for me uh, for for quite some time for for my company. Uh, and if you are in the similar context, take it and try it. If it doesn't work, don't blame the tool. Move on and try something else. Okay. So I'm starting with that. And Kalpesh had a very energetic talk. So I'm going to some of the talk. There is a lot of uh, uh, there is a lot of overlap between what he spoke and what I'm going to speak. So there can be differences also. But again. Take it with, with your context, try it with your context, and see what works. Experiment it, and, and then see, OK, what is working, what is not working. Don't blame the tool, never. OK, so I'm going to start with that. So this talk is about uh, impact mapping, which is a technique, uh, uh, in, which is mentioned in the book with the same title called Impact Mapping. And this is about how do you deliver software which creates some impacts. When we are talking about impacts, Impacts are not just some numbers. Impacts are, we are talking about actual behavior change of the users, of the customers. So, and this is, this is again based on the, on the philosophy that, uh, of, of wisdom of crowds. That is, uh, when, you, when you actually uh, put a lot of people together, and when they know that why they are working, what they are working, then they usually good ideas come out, and it works. So why do we need something like that? So let's look at some, some data. Why, why do we need something like that? And this is a standard uh, CAVS report. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that it's not very clear. Uh, so which, which they, standard company, they, uh, they publish the uh, success of uh, software projects, or uh, rather, the, uh, uh, rather the outcome of software projects. And you can see for the last five years, only 30% of the projects has been successful. And others are either in the challenge stage or fail stage. So when you say challenge, what does it mean? It means that either it was overrun by budget horribly or, or over time, or it didn't meet, it was not in any alignment with the market. And that is what is the challenge stage means. And this talk is, rest of the talk is about how do you avoid that kind of thing? How do you uh, create alignment with the, with the market? And then how do you do that? Uh, that at the complete team level. That's what the rest of the talk is about. So this is one part. This is one data. And uh, how many of you are familiar with this particular model? Have you heard of Waters Come Forward? Kalpesh spoke, spoke about that uh, in the, the, the previous talk. So this is this is where a, a bunch of ideas come from uh, either a PMO or or a, or a you can call them as the highest paid people in the in the room. And they come up with a bunch of ideas. They get ideas, and then they come and throw it to the uh, th throw it to a uh, set, set of group of people, which is called the so-called agile team. They work iteratively. Their their job is to pick, pick items in the backlog. That's it. And then there are there are demos at the end of it. But after the demo, uh, after the demo, it doesn't go to the production. And after a prolonged period of time, it goes to the production, and that is when it's it, it, it's fallen to the users. And that is when we realize that, OK, nothing is working. And this, is, this model is called the Waters Come Forward model, where the problem is that the iteration is only within the middle of the group. The iteration doesn't happen with the entire team. And, and this, is, this is one problem where the alignment, lack of alignment beco becomes a huge problem. And to avoid that, uh, people create a lot of documents uh, and check into the repository. Uh, the documents such as the vision document, the project, project charters. But the problem with that is that it is a shared document. It re just rests in the in the in the repository. I, I uh, hardly gets updated with new learnings, and it doesn't result in any shared understanding. Okay, and if you are still not convinced with what I am talking about, this is a test for you. Ask your team, why are we doing what we are doing? Then. You yourself will be surprised by the answer that you give, and you will be surprised with the answer that you get from your team members. 
and this is this is a this is a common problem. This is not unique to specific uh, a, a specific team or something, and this is a unique problem. And this is why we need certain tools to help us, or tech, certain techniques to help us bring in uh, shared understanding among, among the team. And so, how do you do that? That is where uh, impact mapping com comes into picture. It's a book written by Goiko Ardzik uh, with the same title. And in that, uh, what what he talks about is about how do you bring in alignment within the team. But how does it do that? It it uses the wisdom of crowds. You collaboratively do that. You create create get creative ideas from from all types of people rather than just a group of people. And um, then the another beauty of the system is that it relies on questions. And this is where uh, Lean has proven again and again, if you ask the right question, there is high probability that you will get the right answer. So the entire session uh, is about asking the right question. Mainly, the, the four questions, that it, it forces to you to answer four questions. The four questions are, first is why, why are we doing it? Next is who, whom we are doing it? And the third one is, how are we going to do that? And the lastly, what are we going to do? OK, and the last, what, when we answer what, that is the time when the feature backlog comes in. Until then, feature backlog doesn't come in. And that is the, that is the lowest priority item in the list. What has to change over a period of time? OK, so uh, and then the next question is, who should answer this? Ideally, everyone in the team, because the idea is to have shared understanding. To, to know that everyone in the team knows why they are doing what they are doing. And, uh, but if the team size is too big, then you need, uh, you, can, you can decide who, who can be there. But the yardstick that you can use to decide is that there should be decision makers in the room. Decision makers, who uh, usually architects can make technical decisions. So they have to be there in the team. And business people who can make decisions on behalf of the business. If you are not, if you don't have decision makers within within the team, then that meeting this is is not going to create any kind of outcome, because we have to make decisions during the meeting. Okay, so this is a quick overview about uh, about impact mapping. So I'm going to use our stories, uh, our experiences uh, with uh, while doing this. Is I work for a company called Multiverse. We are a consulting uh, company. So we had we have been trying this with multiple customers now. Uh, and we have seen the results. That's the reason I am here to share my experience. So I, this is an experience report about impact mapping that we had. And for this particular uh, uh, experience report, uh, let's go to uh, Gujarat. Gujarat is a state in uh, in uh, India. Those who don't know, uh, and uh, there is a district called Sabarkanda. So what happened was the district development. The district development officer of uh, Sabarkanda approached us. He's an IAS officer. He approached us to build a MDM solution, which is a um, uh, mobile device management system for, for their uh, health workers. So mobile device management system is remotely controlling your mobile devices from a centralized location. So uh, this is very common in fields, uh, in businesses where they have field staff. Uh, for example, Amazon's Flipkart's, they have a lot of field staff. And they will have some kind of a remote control mechanism so that they can control these devices remotely. So what happened was they have health workers in the in the health department. They go and visit the villages to for to their purposes too. One is uh, they have to collect the health information about the villages, and so that and then they collect that data and bring back uh, and sync it with the cloud. And this this will be used by the medical officers to analyze the problems in the village and create uh, and uh, suggest better uh, medicines or precautionary measures. And another one is to create awareness among the villagers about malnutrition, uh, child mortality, and uh, vaccination, etc. So what they have is in these devices that they this, this is the actual uh, picture. So in the devices that they carry, uh, the ta Android tablets, the, they, it will have videos and PowerPoint presentation, which they show to these particular villages to create awareness about these, these issues. They don't take proper vaccination. They, don't, they are not aware of a uh, balanced diet. And through these videos, they create those awareness. And what happened was when the devices uh, reached around 300, 400 devices, when, they, when it reached that scale, they started losing the, uh, the uh, track of the devices. And not only that, 
they wanted to actually control these devices. Uh, for example, the content in this device has to be updated. When new content, new new video, informational video come into picture, uh, comes in, uh, especially Unisoft releases it, it very frequently, they want to make sure that these videos are there updated in the devices in as early as possible. So if you're doing it in very manually, then it takes a lot of time. So that is the reason they approached us. And then we realized, okay, rather than MDM as a mobile device management system has a set of predefined uh, features, rather than just jumping onto that, let's see, okay, what problem you should first solve? Because rather than just building features as a free feature, and then it, if it is not solving all the problems that they have in the field, then there is no meaning in doing that. So uh, just stepping back and coming back to impact mapping. Impact mapping, the, the beauty of the impact mapping is the center of the map. So it's a mind map. Uh, we'll, we'll create it as, as the talk goes. So center of the map is why we are doing, why, why we are doing what we are doing. And it requires a lot of respect to come up with that. You can't rush it. So the, what is suggested is that you split the session, you split the creation of the map into two different sessions. First is understanding uh, the why, and then filling the rest of the map. So uh, so the first, se first session is called the prepare the map. In both the session, uh, use the yardstick to decide who should be there in the team, especially the decision makers has to be there in the team. And then uh, who can actually, uh, who can help us accelerate the process is what we need in the team. Ideally, everyone in the team, if the team is too big, then you think of how do, how do you make sure that enough decision makers are there in the team, in, in the meeting. So the first session is about preparation of the map. And as a first step in the preparation of the map, you have to understand the goals. So how do you arrive at the goals? You can just throw idea that, that can be done. Or another way to do is coming with uh, using the shopping list. Shopping list is a ter uh, term Goku uses in the, in the list. Shopping list is nothing but your features. So from that, you arrive at the goals. But how do you arrive at the goals? Using five eyes. So uh, the beauty of the system, like I mentioned earlier, is it's based on questions. You ask the right question, there's a high probability that, probability that you will get the right answer. So you, you do uh, five eyes and then you arrive at, okay, why, why, why? And in the end, you know, okay, what is the reasoning behind this particular feature? Sometimes you know that, okay, there is no reason to build this. And that, is, that should not be there in the backlog at all. So uh, again, based on conversation, so this is a conversation that we had, okay, why do we need, uh, why do we need to, uh, uh, registry of monitors or re registry of devices. We don't know which devices are being used by whom. Okay, so similar conversation happened, and in the end, we we could come up with goals. So we arrived at four goals, uh, or if if you look at very closely, they were facing two kinds of problems. One is that they are uh, they they don't know what is happening in the field. They need they don't have any kind of monitoring mechanism saying that. Are the devices being used properly? Are the apps that is which, which is installed on the devices, are those being used properly? And the next is actually updating the devices. When the new version of the app comes out, it has to be updated uh, as early as possible. When the new content comes out, uh, uh, that needs to be updated, it has to be updated as early as possible. All, all, all remotely. So you can, you can see two types of problems. One is actual remote control. One is actually monitoring the system. And uh, then the, so no, no, you know, these are the problems, but how do you know that the solution that we are going to come up will indeed solve this problem? That is when, where the measurement comes into picture. So you know, you need to have enough measurement to track that, okay, is it really working or it's not working? So uh, to, to create good measurements, there are five aspects. One is a scale, that is what are you going to measure? Next is a meter. How are you going to measure it? And the benchmark, that's the current situation. And what are the investment that you're going to make? The, it can be the cost or the time. And lastly, uh, the target. What do you expect at the end of the experiment? And our idea is to reach this particular target. So the measurement, it, it, the goal will work once it reaches the target. If it is not, then there is a failure. So uh, we converted that measurement uh, the, the goals into a tabular format uh, answering almost all of the uh, uh, all of the measurements 
yes it doesn't have all the all the things i mentioned in the previous uh, slide uh, it doesn't have constraint and the uh, and the and the benchmark benchmark is zero because they don't know anything uh, uh, that that's the current situation and uh, constraint we haven't put that because at that point of time we didn't had enough data to de define that so it's okay if you don't have it at that point of time it's okay uh, you should have it at the later point of time as 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 you move forward you should have it so ideally you should have all the numbers filled in but in case if you don't have don't don't wait until you have all the numbers you move on and so now what is the problem uh, we have four problems to be solved and you know how we are going to measure that but the the reality is that we can't solve all the problems at once you have to choose one the choose what you what you are going to solve first and that is the next step of impact mapping that is planning your first milestone so usually when you have conversations uh, uh, within the team you uh, within within the right people the uh, experts or the business people you know okay what is your first problem to be solved if you don't have that if you're still finding it hard to divide it you can use these techniques either a voting mechanism or a virtual cash virtual cash i think you might be already familiar you give virtual cash to people and see okay this is the value of this particular thing and which has the highest value that gets selected and this is also a collaborative thing there is no nothing like okay one person's uh, voice gets uh, gets uh, upvoted i mean this is this is across the team so so usually you will arrive at the right ones at the end of this exercise but you what in my experience with the conversation you you should have a clear winner at this stage if you are not if you are finding it hard then use these techniques to arrive at the right milestone so this is where the preparation ends when you have the first milestone identified uh, you have the the center of the map created so we did a little differently over here so uh, in the previous slide uh, you can see that we had four problems and so at the end of this exercise we realized that okay what we need first is to identify the monitoring thing okay how are these devices being used in the in the field once you know that we can put appropriate remote control mechanism so that's how we approached it and this is this is we are still working with the customer so we are still in the collection data collection stage uh, we are still deploying the app to the more and more devices so what we did differently was after this we created a single goal that is uh first we have to identify the usage pattern of 100 devices so we are not targeting all the devices 100 should be enough for us to know okay what is happening on the field so we combine both the things together uh, those are measurements will which will help us to know that okay is are the devices being used appropriately or it is not if it is not being used appropriately what are the reasons it can be the network or it can be the lack of knowledge of the health workers because they are not tech savvy people so it can be a training that we, that might be required next so again we don't need software to solve that but software will help the product will help no no okay what is happening in the field uh, rather than all the medical officers going and checking what is happening so that is how uh, this particular process is still undergoing we are still learning from the field uh, we have found new learnings uh, as of yesterday day before yesterday we have got new surprises uh, from the field and that's the, that's what is expected so uh, so once you have the first milestone that becomes the center of the map and uh, this answers why are we doing what we are doing okay so just a little more about why this is important uh, so gary flynn who who was a uh, research uh, uh, person in the field of naturalistic decision makers so he did a lot of studies among um, critical uh, 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 who, who works in the critical uh, field such as uh, such as uh, uh, critical care nurses or say firefighters or uh, the operators at the nuclear power plant or chess masters so what he what he what he wanted to find out was how do they make decision on a split of a second because they don't have much time and what what he found was okay if they if you know if humans know why they are doing it they can make decisions fast usually we 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 get confused because we don't know why why the, why why we are doing it so uh, yes as software professionals we will not work on very high critical systems that's true but what is common in software is unexpected events even if you do the same thing again and again at times you get you get surprised with what is happening 
So how do you make decision when such unexpected events happen? If you don't have a clear goal of what you want, you usually make better decisions. So that, that's why a lot of emphasis on coming up with the uh, center of the map. So and it requires a separate session and it is better to be done in that way. Okay, and the idea is to have uh, shared uh, understanding. So, um, so once you create that, now you remember the four questions. The first question we answered, why are we doing it? You have to answer the rest of the four. Uh, that is, the next is, that's the first level of, uh, uh, first level of uh, map is who. Uh, and, and again, emphasizing that getting the why correctly, identify the value that you want to deliver. And usually the value, value it's not about the features. Don't look at the features or the scope. Look at the value that you want to deliver. And next is who. Who are, who are the actors in the system? We are very clear about the end users, but they are not just the uh, actors in the system. There are so many people involved in a, in a software project. And so again, rely on the right questions to answer that. The, as the questions to be answer, uh, asked are, who gets impacted with this? That's the most obvious question. Who can disrupt this? That's also very important. And so that we can avoid that, that disruption. And who can help us uh, reach to the desired, desired effect? So to give, give an example, this is what we came up with for our MDM product. Uh, the villagers are the obvious impactor. They get impacted with, uh, with, the, with the product. Who can help are the health workers and the medical officers by using the devices properly and help medical officers training the health workers to use the devices correctly. And network, if, if this completely relies on mobile network, if that doesn't work, then there is a huge problem. So they can dis disrupt us from achieving what we want. And there are apps that are being used by the health workers. The user experience of the app is not right, then that also gets affected. And keep in mind that these health workers are not at all tech savvy. That's why it's more important over there. In, in, in any uh, product, uh, user experience is a big thing. But especially in this kind of situation, it has to be very, very intuitive. So, uh, so these are the people uh, who, gets, uh, who, who can help us or who can disrupt from achieving what we want. And um, how do you get this right? Ideally, we should have personas. Uh, how many of you are familiar with personas? Okay, so I didn't include that uh, this in this in this presentation because that itself is a separate talk by itself. So uh, ideally, I should have shown that uh, uh, shown the persona instead of the uh, on of the road, but uh, but it, it it might get confused. That's the reason I didn't use that. So personas are are the best way for you to empathize that with that particular role. So when you say personas, you need to know exactly what they are doing, what their day looks like, okay, what what interests them, what frustrates them. You need to know exactly everything about that particular person. So if you know that, you will be able to visualize that person better. And then when you are developing things, you can see how that person will be using it. So it's 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 a very good exercise. Highly recommend that when you are doing. Uh, uh, when you're doing impact mapping, uh, come up with personas and then stick that into the informative workspace so that people can relate to that. And it works very, very beautifully. So that's a, that's something that I've not included over here, but I highly recommend you to do that. And so we have the first level. So we know why we are doing it and we know who for whom we are doing it. The next level is, okay, how are we going to do it? And again, a set of questions. Uh, so the, in the how part, what is the key over here is the change. The change means change in the behavior. That is what is the impact means. If you are not able to create any change in the end users, then that means we, the software is not getting impacted correctly. So uh, we came up with a set of uh, how. Okay, so the better health for the villagers, that is what our aim is. Okay, and all others are related to that. But how do you get it right? To get it right, focus on the activities that person will be doing and what will happen when this particular goal is met. What is the change? And that change is what is should be the focus for. 
So uh, the key over here is the impact, and, and that impact has to be a change in the behavior. And that is something that you have to keep in mind. Just checking time. So we have identified the how. Uh, I'm not going to the detail of MDM because that's that's not the point over here. The point is to actually get across, okay, how can we use impact mapping? And uh, now, uh, if, before this step, uh, we can do one more thing. You, you might be remembering the uh, shopping list. Uh, every, every team will have a shopping list of features. And you can take that and put under the how, uh, map it to the how. Uh, but that you can do it, you, cannot, you may or may not do it. That's not very important. But that's one way to visualize, OK, wh what are we going to do? Another thing over here is that you can, this is where the, uh, this is where the collaboration comes into picture. Um, use the diverge and converge of the design thinking. So what, what this does is give 20 minutes to the team, a uh, time works time to the uh, everyone in the team, uh, in, in, in the room, and then ask them to write as many ideas as possible. One, one uh, thing to keep in mind is that there is no, no criticism about any of the idea. Every idea is good. And let them come up with as many ideas as possible. And uh, there is no talking at that time, point of time. This is where the creativity comes into picture. And this is a very powerful thing uh, in, in design space. So uh, this design studio that Kalpesh was talking about in the earlier talk, or the design thinking uh, actually encourages to do that. Okay, so diverge and converge. So what you have to do is get as many ideas as possible and get the best out of that. So uh, time works it to 20 minutes and make sure that you are not criticizing or appreciating any of the ideas at that point of time. Okay, the idea is to get as many as possible. And how during that process, ask these questions so that people can focus on the impacts and the and the goal. Okay, so these questions will help them to be very focused rather than coming up with these random ideas. Okay, but it doesn't matter whatever the idea is, there is no criticism for that. And we came up with a set of uh, set of features. Uh, we didn't actually look back and just set check whether it is actually part of MDM or not, because our idea is to learn the usage. So uh, we didn't much care about okay whether it is part of the MDM solution or, at all or not. And now the moment you have a lot of number, what is next? What is ne needed to be done next is to actually prioritize. And that's the next step. Uh, you need to. You can't. You can't do everything. The idea is not actually to finish all the feature listed. The idea is to see the impact as early as possible. So how do you do that? So you have to identify. You have to identify the priorities. Again, a set of questions. Here the questions are. Uh, uh, if you look at the questions, uh, the ones that is going to give us immediate results. That is what you have to. Uh, you have to focus first. So the questions are like, what are the key assumptions you set? And are there any high, high value but low hanging, low hanging fruits in this? Okay. So uh, here again, you can use the same voting mechanism. Uh, one more idea over here is to use a color coding uh, to, to identify those low hanging ones so that you can do that quickly and see whether there is any change. You don't have to wait until the end, end of, uh, or, or for a prolonged period of time to see whether it is actually working. So, so we did that, uh, and the the stars represents the votes, and we had a set of uh, voted ones. So what we did was we focused more on the Android app itself, less on the reporting, because what we realized was if we have uh, if we have the data in our database at any cost we can get the data, that's not a big problem. So you don't have to wait until the reporting features are done. To go for us to go into the market, we can go into the market even before that, or we can start deployment even even before that. So that is what we did with this. So we we hardly have any any features for uh, for we initially thought okay we will not focus on the uh, reporting features at all, and because the key over here is on the learning. So fifty more minutes, and uh, so this is the feature list, but. Keep in mind that as you progress, this can change, or I would say this should change. Okay, don't keep this as a constant. Keep the rest of them as a constant. And change this according to what is happening when you deploy. So 
so this is by this the map is done uh, uh, this is a complete mind map the beauty of this mind map is that it cover it conveys you very beautifully it is a picture it's like an image you can stick into anywhere and then people should get what, what we are talking about or what why we are doing what we are doing and who are the people involved in that and but before that uh, uh, even uh, even after that you can actually do some more prioritization and that is a next major thing that is uh, which is called the earn or learn session so in this uh, you can ask this question do you really need a software to test this can you do some kind of a quick prototype to get initial feedback because you know that once you write the code you have to maintain it which is becoming very very costly and all of us know the cost of maintaining a code right and uh, so we don't need as at times if it is a, if it is a, so uh, the question to ask is are we going to learn anything if we are going to learn anything do we really need a software can we do with with something else usually a prototype if you are going to earn something earning is not always revenue it can be cost cutting a reduction in the cost then how are we go, going to do that is there any half half the half partially manual process we don't have to automate everything through a partially manual process can we start earning things so these questions are very impro uh, uh, very important and the design thinking ideas like design studio or design sprint can help you uh, to quickly validate things so uh, and um, with this with this exercise we came to two things we didn't we didn't come up with any prototype because we we realized that it will be hard for us to actually test it we want to install it on the device and test it so there is no other way to test it other than deploying the software but one decision we could make is that we don't have to support all the android devices because all of them are using a specific device and most of them are running on a very uh, older version of android so the the, di uh, the diversity of fra fragmentation of android we don't have to worry about it over here at least in the initial stages for the 100 device at least because the idea is to learn faster and whatever we need to do to learn faster that's more than sufficient this became uh, very useful because uh, certain apis to uh, to uh, track the app usage the, that those apis have changed uh, in the latest version of android so rather than adding code for supporting the latest version we realized okay but let's not support this particular feature the latest version of android we'll support only the 4.4 version of android so those kind of decision can come when you ask the right question and uh, we also decided to lo lower the priority for reporting that is something that i already uh, explained already and um, okay so um, so we are done with the map uh, this is the final map and uh, again I, uh, I, I as i mentioned this is this is a very simple way to communicate okay what what we are doing and and uh, what is expected out of this particular experiment and now the question is okay how how do you measure it so we came up with a measurement initially but that is not reflected on the map yet so how do you do that so there are a uh, couple of ways to do that you can add extra nodes within the within the map to do that or you can make it as bullets under the, uh, below the map but the some of the software that we uh, online softwares doesn't support bullets or say uh, uh, doesn't support adding nodes so uh, one thing that you can use is each each place you can rephrase it with uh, with a measurement that you want to do for example uh, the, in the map in the map that i have shown the center of the map says learn device usage for the 100 devices so that itself shows okay what is the measurement once it re reaches 100 okay we have reached an experiment stage and then we can look back and say okay what is happening so you can do that by ex uh, by expanding your node to reflect the measurement another way to do that is a separate metrics table this also you can draw it in the same uh, whiteboard or in a, in a software that you are using uh, to this will this will actually uh, uh, actually uh, share the information on what is happening on the field to everyone in the team and there is very rare chance that people doesn't uh, the team the team members ignore this so they know exactly what is happening uh, within the field by by uh, by creating that particular thing on the whiteboard itself so this is what we you, uh, that we did 
and we we use this same format to share with the uh, share the reports with the stakeholders. Okay, what is happening in the field? This is what we share with. So, like I mentioned, we are still under the deployment. We have reached uh, around forty to fifty devices. We are still the device usage is still low. So, we are trying to see whether it's a network problem. We are in talks with the uh, network uh, people over there to see okay what can we improve. And we are also brainstorming. Okay, as it is low now itself, should we wait until hundred devices are reached, or can we do something else? Should we stop this experiment and should we move to something? Else? So uh, that is what is happening. Uh, and uh, so the idea over here is that even before we build all the features, we started asking, okay, should we really need to build all the features? Because there is no meaning in building it because it's not creating much impact. So uh, and just to recap, uh, this is the mind map of the impact map. I don't know whether it will be very clear. Uh, sorry about that. So in back map, uh, two sessions of impact map. First one is to, uh, the uh, preparation for the map to identify the why, the goals of the uh, of the current uh, current experiment, and the second one is actual creation of the map. In the preparation step, identify the goals, identify the measurements. And plan your first milestone, and in your in, in the while creating the map, um, draw the skeleton. That is answer all the rest of the question. Who are we doing it for? Why are we doing it for? And how are we doing? And what we are going to do? And ask the question: Is there any alternate that we can do so that we can keep, get quick feedback? Um, uh, identify the key priorities and focus on that. And lastly, do we really need a software to do that, or can we do uh, can we learn this much quicker? And what it tries to avoid is the the typical planning smells, where the 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 features are either prioritized by someone, uh, which can be like a pet feature for that particular person or a, for a group of people, or some ideas. Okay, just random ideas come in, and then that gets added to the backlog, and we don't know why we need that, and we we sticking to the wrong assumption. We thought. Okay, this is why we are doing it, and we don't we don't validate over the process of building it, and in the end we realize okay we are we are much much away from the uh, from the from what we are supposed to do, and in the end it 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 tries to avoid uh, creating wrong solution, or let me put in this way, it will try to fail you early. You learn as early as possible. Are we on the right track or not? And that's also a good thing. Failing is per se is not a bad thing, but if you if you are learning from that. Then it's a good thing. And um, again, some of the key learnings uh, to emphasize: impact is all about behavioral change. It's not just some numbers. It has to really change someone's behavior, especially the users of the system, the customers of the system. And you get usually get right answers when you ask the right questions. But that's a, that's that requires practicing the right. Uh, but do practice it, and you will eventually get. The right question, the right answers, and always measure uh, so that to make sure that if you need a change, you can make that change as early as possible. Make it visible so that uh, to improve the shared shared understanding, and shared understanding is not about shared documentation. It's about collaboration. And uh, two or three things uh, what I learned from this uh, is that this. One thing that I've, I've started personally started feeling is that this is the best way to inject brain thinking, uh, the the thinking of experiments. How do you bring in that kind of a mindset by asking these questions? Uh, usually, the team changes their thinking process towards experimentation, and they open their minds to try that out. And which I've been struggling for a prolonged period of time, both within the team as well as the customers. But this has been successful so far, and it has worked for me. Uh, again, uh, try it out at, in your context and see whether it works. But usually, asking the right questions usually works. And um, two things that you can use as part of impact mapping is one is design sprint. Design sprint is a. Uh, uh, how many of you are aware of design sprint? Okay. Design sprint is from uh, Google Ventures. It's a very structured approach of five-day uh, sprint, where you start with an idea, then you brainstorm and come up with a solution which you think may work, and you even test it with a prototype, 
and then at the end of the day the fifth day you validate your learning you don't need a working software for doing that and in, through impact mapping if you see opportunities where you can try it and then you can try this is not just for a specific software complete solution you can try in a design sprint even for a feature to come up with better ideas of how to, how to implement it and again diverge converge 20 minutes uh, across the team and in the end you vote for things and then take the pick one pick, pick the ones which which you think will 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 uh, will empathize with the users more and user story mapping just patterns user story mapping that's the best way you can slice uh, things very very small so when you are arriving at features use user story mapping this also fo forces you to empathize with the user because the center of the user story mapping is a user it's not the solution it's not the feature it's about the user and that is one thing that i have started realizing user story mapping is something that i've started very recently but design sprint has worked very well with impact mapping and that's that's my experience and that's it and uh, i think uh, these are some references and i hope you take the learnings from here and start doing impact mapping questions Any questions? Yeah. Ah. Ah. Yes, 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 yes. You can slice it really, really well using the user mapping. Because what you what you need is to try out something very, very quickly. For that, you don't need. If you the moment you start looking at the feature level, it is it will grow. But when you look at users' behaviors or activities, then you can get the small size slides. Ah, huh. it, it was not for how; it was for what. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why the questions comes into picture keep on asking the same question so that people are focused towards the activities of the users rather than some just some random idea and anyway you're going to do a converge uh, after diverge so you will get you will prioritize things which are which are which are mapping to the because it it's the center of the map is the goal so it's very rare that you take something which is not mapped to that very very rare the diverge converge is better done in 20 minutes so let as many ideas come in within that time for 5 minutes to 1 hour it is sufficient yeah ours is a very small team so we even had to choose team so okay i think That's it. Thank you all. I'll be here if you have further questions. Then.